from the man in, uh, as they say, Kentucky. <laughs> the land, you know, of, of uh, thoroughbreds and thoroughbreds and branch water. You know that? Okay. And the story goes like this. A horse was trained by a man there, and this man went to church quite regularly, so he tended to use biblical phrases to train the horse. So he trained the horse to stop whenever he said amen. <laughs> and he trained the horse to go whenever he said praise the Lord. <laughs> a man came to buy the horse, and he thought, you know, I go to church too, but this is a little much. I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather train the horse with other words. And he got on the horse, and the thing took off, boom, like a flash, you know. Man, it came running. Over the hills, through the woods, came to the edge of a cliff, and the guy was saying, whoa, stop, stop, whoa, and it wasn't stopping. And he finally said, okay, amen, or stop right at the edge. And the guy said, praise the Lord. <laughs> reason I tell you that funny story is so that you fix in your heads what comes up in the readings a lot today, and it's this. We want to make God work the way we want. We make God in our image. And we keep trying that, and it doesn't work, but we keep trying. So look at that Old Testament story today. The people have been slaves in Egypt for a long time. They're finally free. And instead of saying, praise the Lord, <laughs> what they do is, <laughs> they start complaining about everything. You're not doing things the way we want. You better shape up up there and do what we want. It's amazing. And so God gives them, God does these works. This bread from heaven, if you will, these quail that fill the camp so they can eat, and all these kinds of things. But if you know the rest of the story, you know that still won't be enough. It's almost like they're saying, what can you do? And look how that compares them with the gospel today. That's one of the questions that people ask Jesus. What can you do? And Jesus could have said, well, did you notice, like, yesterday I fed, like, 5,000 of you with, you know, three loaves and two fish? Did you happen to notice that? No, the question is, what can you do? You see, they're so concerned about things that don't last very long. We know that from another clue in the text today, which is, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? I hope you remember that little phrase in there. It was a common phrase at the time, and it was often, not always, but often used to refer to these practices that a lot of Pharisees and other people had piled on top of the Law of Moses. So, for example, you could only put a certain kind of pin in a certain kind of fabric. You could only walk so many paces on the Sabbath day before you had to sit and rest for a certain amount of time, and then you could get up and walk a certain amount of paces and then sit down, okay? You could only cook with certain fires, made certain ways in certain pots. You could only put certain metal into certain wood. I mean, it just went on and on and on and on and on some more endlessly. Those things were called the works of God. Really? So this is what Jesus was pointing out to them. Stop. You're making God into this image of, of the divine accountant who's up there making sure that you did everything precisely. That's not what God is about. It's not at all. But God has fed you as he did in the past. God has just fed you in that feeding of the thousands that you forgot about already. That God is going to feed you again, people, but stop making God into your own image and likeness. It's the other way around. Do you remember what happened after Jesus fed the 5,000? What did they want to do to Jesus? Do you remember this? They wanted to make him king. It was their image, what they wanted to project onto Jesus. And so he got away from them because they got it all wrong. They're constantly trying to make God into their own image. None of us do that, of course. But you see how often that happens. 
It's something we really need to pay attention to ourselves. Remember that we are made in the image of God. God is not made in the image of us. God is not made. It's very different. The reason that we begin to recognize that God has given his image to us is so that we make that image present in this world. Jesus now is just setting up to begin teaching them about the bread of life. We just got a little piece of it in the gospel today. There's more to come next Sunday. And you know the results of that. Many people will leave him. But he teaches them. And he starts today. I, the bread of life. You might have noticed they skipped and because in Aramaic they didn't have the verb to be. He'd say, I, me, bread of life. It's very immediate, very direct, and very clear. But they're not going to believe it, most of them. Some of them will. I notice that today in the Christian world, an awful lot of Christians, when we get to this bread of life story, really turn it into something symbolic only. So it's like the bread symbolizes Jesus. This isn't his teaching. He doesn't use that term, I, this stuff symbolizes me. He doesn't say that at the Last Supper. And he doesn't say it at Capernaum. I, me, bread of life. Don't add things in there. I really feel that a lot of Christians, as a result, receive a symbolic presence of Christ. And that's a nice thing. But that's not enough. I'm sorry. You and I desperately need to feed on the life of God. That's what the Eucharist is about. That we can feed on God's life. Not a symbol of it. You're not supposed to symbolically care for the poor. You care for them. You're not supposed to symbolically love somebody. You love somebody. Really. You don't symbolically feed on Christ. You feed on Him. Why? Because He is life. He is the bread of life. Nothing less will do. Isn't it a great thing to have this gift passed on to us? That's what we're feeding on. Not merely a symbol. It's a symbol, but it's more than that. It's something far greater. So that you and I cannot, it's not for us to stand there and say, aren't you wonderful in the Eucharist? We should. But we should also do the next step, which is what? Get out of here and do something about it out there. Really. Become the bread of life for people who need justice, who need a home, who need education, who need help. You could go on and on and on. But that's what we're supposed to do. And I really believe, sisters and brothers, we get awfully weak without feeding here. We need that in us. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. That's coming up in the Gospel. Of course not. That is the life of God. Given for us. So that we, in turn, give it out. You become this image of God. Don't limit what God is by you making God in your image. Our little minds are puny. Think of God's wisdom and compare a human mind with that. It's like nothing. You can't even compare them. The challenge is for you to realize God is teaching you in Jesus something far deeper. That you need to feed on the bread of life so that you become the bread of life for others. What a beautiful thing. I hope you got it. You don't train a horse at the wrong moment, but you might make a horse work the way you want. You're not going to do it with God. Start learning it now. and Let God challenge you to realize how much you need to be fed on the bread of life so that you can become that bread for the world.